Thank you for tuning in to Hope TV, your preferred Christian station that brings to you life transforming programs and um, programs that will meet you at the point of your need. Continue to support Hope TV with your donations and um, in every way that you can and invite and um, spread the, the news to others to also um, watch and make time. Thank you also and welcome to Hope Sabbath School, making time to join us to discuss the word of God together. We are on lesson four. This week we are looking at lesson four or the fourth episode of this quarter's study um, with an interesting and yet chilling theme, something that we, we don't want to hear, but it is important for us to talk about. And the theme is death, dying, and the future hope. Death, dying, and the future hope. What the word of God, what God has to say about um, our state of death. So last week, we looked at lesson three with the caption, um, Understanding Human Nature, How Human Was Created. And we got to know that we were made, humanity, or man was made out of the dust and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Um, we continue with that, with um, lesson four, which is the Old Testament hope, the Old Testament hope. And I am reviewing this week's lesson with Meridian Ghana Conference. And I am joined by my brothers, Enoch, Abeku Bart Plange, Teria. He worships at Tema Community 6. Enoch, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Life God is, is good. All the time. You're welcome. Good Thank to see you. you once again. Yes. I believe Tema Community 6 Church is doing wonderful. Yes, we are doing great. We thank God. And I'm also privileged to be joined by Dr. Bismarck Boaton. He is also from Tema Community 6. Doc, you're yes. welcome. Thank you. I believe you are doing well. I'm well. And the family? They are all well. We thank God for the gift of life. And I want to um, say a big hi and thank you to all our viewers who leave, go to our social media channels and leave your comments and your questions. And those who watch us every week, um, God bless you. God bless you. I believe that um, this discussion is really impacting lives and changing lives. And that is the reason why we are here. So we will look at, um, before we go into our discussion, Enoch will give us the um, opening prayer before we commence our discussion. Okay. Shall we pray? Father Divine, we thank you so much for an opportunity to study your word. We pray and ask that, Father, let us not only be listeners, but doers of your will, so that when you come, we will not be found wanting, but will have everlasting life. This is our prayer through Christ, our Lord and Master Savior. Amen. 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 We look at our foundational scripture for this week's lesson, um, which is, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 17 and 19. We are told that by faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son. He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Amen. That is a memory text. Um, Dr. Borton. Hello, Pastor. This is a fascinating text. Yeah. What is it talking about? Well, good evening. Uh, Pastor, I believe that um, the text is telling us the kind of faith the whole trust Abraham had in his maker. Mm. 
that even though there is a request, something that in these days we will call it beyond our control, something we, we, we don't really have control over, Abraham was willing to give all mm. just because of the faith. I say just because now someone will ask you, what is the reason? Why are you doing all these? Abraham understood the call mm. and the sacrifice that comes with it. And so it wasn't surprising that the Bible makes us understand that mentioning the names of the Hall, Hall, Hall of Fame, mm. Abraham is mentioned yes. in relation to that particular sacrifice he made. All right. Um, that, that was mind-boggling. Yeah. You know, and no wonder... Um, it stands as one of the major highlights yes. of scriptures, yeah. particularly the Old Testament. Yeah. All right, Enoch. Um, what's your thought on the on the text, and how is it related? How do we relate it to the t the caption, the Old Testament hope? I think that you know um, Abraham is regarded as the father of faith. Mm. Well, when we sing the song, Faith of Our Fathers, the one who comes up in mind is Abraham. Yes. Now. And we sing Father Abraham too. Yes, we sing <laughs> Father Abraham too. Having many sons and daughters. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. So the faith that Abraham had in God, that to an extent that when he was called, he didn't shake his head. Mm. He didn't even know where he was going. But he just stood up and went. That's faith. Mm. I mean... It's like your, your mother says, get up and go there. You, you have that faith. You have that belief that mm. once she has called you to go, I mean, you have that relationship with her. But Abraham is just there and God calls him. Mm -hmm. That faith that Abraham has had, I think uh, we've, we've not had anyone to attest to that faith. And that's why we refer to him as the father, the mm. father of our faith. And so relating it to the text, he picks up a son whom he has waited for years mm. to give birth to. Mm. Doesn't even tell the <coughs> wife, because how is he even uh, going to explain that to the wife, mm. that I'm going to sacrifice this boy? Then they get to a point where the son also asks you, where is the lamp for which we are going to use for the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. And he says, he believes strongly that God will provide. Yes. And eventually, God provides. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's faith. Yes. Hallelujah. That's true. Mm. Uh, and you know, breaking down the, the text, it begins by faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Abraham, when put to the test. So he was tested, yes. yeah, right? And it means that we will also be tested. Yeah. He offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And don't forget that the promises... Um, were in relation to this very son, yeah, mm -hmm. right? That out of him, he, he, he will become the father of many oh, nations. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor, and this same person is, is supposed to be offered, yes, <laughs> and he did, yes. So, Pastor, I wanted to say that the fact that the Bible mentioned it as a test means God had invested certain kind of training in Abraham. Mm. So, I believe that we as Christians are also going to be tested in our own ways. Mm. It means all these lessons we are going through, just as we see in the Bible, that all those things that, are, that were written down were written for our learning. Mm. We are also supposed to understand the training we are going through, that when our test comes, we will be ready to stand for him. Sure. Amen. 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 And then he continues to say that he considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead. Yes. Mm? Mm -hmm. So... Um, this is in relation to resurrection. Yes. And figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Yeah, exactly. So at a point, Isaac was dead. It's like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, at a point, I did, Isaac was like he was dead. And an intervention was made, a miraculous intervention was made, mm -hmm. and he received him back. Yes. Is that not so? Exactly. Yes. Because exactly. in, um, in Abraham's mind, when he was leaving home, Three days journey to Mount uh, Moriah. Moriah. Yeah. 
there was only one thing in his mind. Isaac is going to be killed. Isaac yeah. is going to be sacrificed. Isaac is dead. Yeah. Without his knowledge. Yes. But he received him back. All right. So um, we, 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 we're going to look that the Old Testament is grounded um, not on Greek ideas about the natural immortality of the soul, mm -hmm. but on the biblical teaching of the final resurrection of the dead. So this tells us that this week's lesson, as far as lesson four is concerned, is about the resurrection of the dead. Um, how could a no longer existent human body, cremated into ashes or destroyed by other means, be brought to life again? This is a question that um, can beat our imagination. How can someone who has been deceased, perhaps for centuries or even millennia, recover again his or her identity? How possible is it? We're going to look at how it is possible in the sight of God. And so this week, we're going to reflect on how the idea of the final resurrection happened or unfolded in the Old Testament times with special focus on statements from Job, um, Psalms, and the prophet Isaiah, and Daniel, and Daniel. And I just want to, we have two discussion questions um, to guide us, to guide us. So one, the first question is about looking at the powerful creation of God, right? It's estimated that two trillion galaxies are out there, mm -hmm. each made of billions and billions of stars and all of that. And then, so the question now is, if we have a God who can make or create such universe, is it impossible for him to resurrect the dead? Because in the first place, he created out of nothing. Yeah. So that's the first question. Then um, the second question is, Hebrews 11 highlights the faithfulness and expectations of many of the heroes of faith of ancient times. How can this chapter enrich our understanding of the hope that the characters in the Old Testament had even before the resurrection of Jesus? Right? So... Um, how did the Old Testament characters express hope, or how did they have faith even before the resurrection of Jesus? Because they didn't see Jesus physically, but by faith they saw him. That's what we're going to um, look at. Very interesting lesson, very interesting study. Um, so Sunday we have the, the title, I Shall See God. I shall see God. Enoch, um, when will we see God? <laughs> I think we will see God when um, Jesus Christ comes this time around, the second time, mm. to take his children away. All right. Now, when you look at the Sunday's lesson, mm -hmm. it is trying to explain to us how unfair life is. Okay. And how fair life is. Mm. Now, when you look at the world as a christian sometimes you begin to have a perception to think that following god or following christ comes with hardship but if you don't go to church you have a free life to live mm. now when you look at the sabbath school trying to give an explanation it says that in in psalms chapter 73 verse 12 to 7 mm where it talks about that um, the good people are actually suffering mm -hmm. and the unrighteous people are actually the, those who are prospering in life. Yes. A typical example is Job. Mm -hmm. Now, Job himself did not realize that he became the epicenter of the conflict between Christ or God and the devil. Mm. Now, Job 1 and Job chapter 1 and chapter 2 tells us what Job went through. Job had everything. Job was blameless and upright. Job 
um, he had every material thing which he lost mm. to a point that his his partner, his own life partner, mm. questioned why he continues to follow him. Why doesn't he just curse God and die? So this is this this is one who has served God all his life. He had everything. Mm. What didn't Job have? He had everything. All the treasures of this era you can talk about. He was rich. Life was true prosperous for him. But because he was serving God, mm. he became the epicenter of a conflict. Where he was, I mean, the devil was asked that, oh, he has been across the world, but have you, have you actually seen my servant Job? Mm. So you can see that we, we, we serve God to a point that God himself is attesting to the fact that, have you actually seen this my son or this my daughter? Yes. And so Christians at a point in time question that, why is it that I have served God all my life? I mean, I pay my tithes. I, I mean, what the Ten Commandments say, I do everything. Mm. But unfortunately, I've lost my job. Mm -hmm. My marriage isn't working. I've lost I mean, my parents. I've lost my parents. I've lost my loved family, ones, loved yes. ones. To tragedy, I mean, to mm. some tragedies that you don't, you can't even imagine. Yeah. And you begin to ask yourself, why? Me? Why? Yeah. Why is it me? Mm. Why is it that life is unfair to me? But we have a, a typical biblical example right. of Job, who had everything, but he lost it. Mm. But there is one so thing. How does one, he say he will see God? Yes, yeah, so there is one interesting thing, and that's mm. in Job <coughs> chapter 19, mm -hmm. verse 25 to 27. Yes. Where he says that, For I know that my Redeemer lives, mm. and he shall stand at the last on earth. And after my skin is destroyed. So Job was ready at a point that even if his skin gets destroyed, he says that this I know that in my flesh I shall see God. That is the hope Amen. Mm. that Job had. That Job got to a point, he didn't even care if his life is gone. Mm. He believed strongly in mm. the God that he serves, that eventually, should mm. he even lose his life, he will see God. Will you add the verse 27? It's yes, so the verse 27 says that, mm. whom I shall see for myself, mm -hmm. And my eyes shall behold, mm. and not another, mm. how my heart yearns within me. Wow, hallelujah. Amen. Mm. And you, you can see that uh, in First Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, it says something there. Mm -hmm. This is a God that we have not seen before. First Timothy 6, 16. This God who alone has immortality. Mm. Dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Mm. This is the God that Job, who has not seen before, believes strongly that should he lose everything, he will see him. And that's what the Sunday's lesson is saying. All right. I shall see God. Mm. And, and lastly, the typical example is about. Uh, uh, the, the last example was in relation to Martha. Yes, and when, Lazarus. Right? Yeah, Lazarus. Mm. When Lazarus was gone, she believed strongly that eventually he would see God. Mm. Mm. So, um, uh, Dr. Barton, I'm coming to you. All right. You know, looking at Job's statements again, very powerful. He says, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, so it means that, just as the Bible says in Ecclesiastes um, chapter 9, yeah. verse 5, that the living knows they will die. Yeah. Job was aware that at a point he will die. Yes. So he's aware of that. But at the same time, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Mm. The skin is the same as the flesh. Yes. The skin will be destroyed, mm -hmm. and then in his flesh he will see God, meaning that he, in his mind, he knows for sure that the skin will be destroyed for some time yeah. or for a while, yeah. and he will gain it back in order for him to see, see. God. And he continues to say with his own eyes, he not someone it. telling yes. him. What yes. did you want to, what will you want to add to You see, so I talk about, so yes. that's what I was talking about, the kind of training God takes us through. Mm. 
it may not come in a way that it will be public for people to acknowledge whether we are sitting right before the feet of Christ and that he's teaching us. No. You can see from what Job is saying, you, you could glean that this person is seeing a lot of mysterious stuff. Mm. Where is he getting all these things from? It yes. tells you the kind of relations, the kind of relationship he's had with his maker. Mm. Certain undisclosed explanations, things that were not so common at the time, this man is talking about. Yes. That he knows that there's going to be a certain kind of resurrection after his passing, mm. after his body is dec decomposed, that he's going to come back to life. Mm. And this is what we see in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay, yes. He is... When the corrupt, when the incorruptible incorrupt. has put on, yes. So you see, when we, the body has now put on that incorruption, incorruption, yes. this person, this man Job, is way ahead of his time. Mm -hmm. Where his friends are not able to see things, he sees things that is unimaginable. All right. I so see let me say that mm -hmm. that is that could be the reason. I wasn't there at the time, mm. obviously, but that could be the reason why this man had this unflinching hope in God. Mm. That even all his friends are letting him off. His own wife is letting, I mean, leaving, and he is so sure mm. that what he believes in is the true source of life. And so he didn't care what life was throwing at him, was. even though he was suffering physically. Yes. But he knew he was still marking that point, mm. that this is where I want to reach. And once I'm there, I'm good to go. He had hope. The hope. And the hope was so strong. Yes. How can we learn to trust God even amid the harsh unfairness yeah. of life? When we were at the university, I remember this story. One of our mates, okay. her father was an elder. And on one Sabbath afternoon, her father, in the company of others, were visiting or transporting um, some goods actually, they were going to another um, church to do kindness or to give them something. They were embarking on ministry. Mm -hmm. They were on ministry. They had an accident and the elder died on Sabbath afternoon on a way to mission and ministry, not on any day where <laughs> an Adventist elder going for mission, accident, he dies. Another story, um, one Sabbath afternoon also, as after church, people sit on church premises. I don't want to mention the name of the church so that I will not recall um, the pains of people. Yeah. They were sitting on the premises. And you know what? Someone started a car. Um, the person thought he had put the car on drive. Instead, it was on reverse gear. And the car reversed and smashed um, <laughs> an old woman who was part of those sitting. That also, Sabbath afternoon. <laughs> not this time, not even on a road, on the church premise that they have had divine service. The key question is, as Christians and as children of God, does it matter how we exit this world, how we die? I believe... Y you get my question? Yes, I believe... It matters. Okay. And does it, is it able to tell who is righteous and who is not righteous depending on the way you, you, you exit? I think that is probably not uh -huh. the case. So that's where I'm coming from? Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. So please go ahead. So I was saying it mm -hmm. matters based on 
what encounter the person probably might have had okay. with his maker. Sure. So we can see from the book of Psalm uh, 49, mm -hmm. where David is trying to reorient us, that yes. whereas most people are so focused on getting worldly pleasures, mm. our attention, our focus must be rather on our maker. Yes. He understood that everything that he has obtained on earth mm. is just fleeting. Yes. Everything, all put, to, all put together. Mm. Just as Job was saying that he is willing to even lose his own skin, because that is the last time, that's the last thing um, Satan said, skin for skin. Yes. A man is willing to give everything to protect himself, and that's what we see today. But David is reorienting us. Mm. People are focused on getting wealth. People are focused on doing everything possible just to make sure they achieve their own self-gratification. Instead of that, David is telling us we should rather focus on what we have prepared for eternity. All right. What our Savior has prepared for us. And that focus on God all the time, yeah. making him the number one in our lives, means that you are always prepared to exit. Yes, always. This life. You are always, always prepared yes. because you know you shall see him yes. one day. All right. We will go to Monday from the power of the grave. Yeah. Um, Doc, what, is, what do we have to um, learn from this lesson? All right. So um, David is telling us some interesting stuff about life, just as I started. OK. You know, human perspective on life seems to always focus on material, the materialistic value. Mm -hmm. We seem to shy away from the divine side. We seem to shy away from the spiritual side. Mm. But I keep saying that the fact that classical physics has given way to quantum physics, classical world giving way to quantum world, mm. tells us today that it isn't just about physical. Mm. There is more to the physical. You are a scientist. I am. <laughs> <laughs> the writer, the author of this Cortez lesson. Tim, Dr. Tim, yes. is also a scientist. Yes. Uh, and I like the perspectives of scientists <laughs> yeah. when they are expatiating the Bible. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's so interesting. Mm. It's so interesting when you get to understand that science blinding a lot of people into believing that it is just about materials. It is just about time. Yes. It's just about matter. And yet, we, when we are just on our, on our way to exit of this life, mm. we become conscious of what is ahead of us. Yes. And so we see a lot of top people who, at a time of their exit, would call for pastors and ministers to come and do something, come and pray. Mm. It tells us naturally that we believe inherently that there is some aspect of life. And so David is saying, cut it short. Mm. <clears throat> Change the perspective and consider the God factor. All right. And the God factor, as we see in Psalm 49, verse 15, that it reads, but God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. Mm -hmm. Something that we see in the book of Hebrews chapter, let me, let me take a little time to read what is in Hebrews chapter 2. Mm. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, mm -hmm. where the Bible tells us that for us, so let me even focus on the 15, mm. um, the latter part of the 14. Mm. He said, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and the 15, mm. and deliver them who through fear of death. Mm. This is where human inclination comes to a point, uh, mm -hmm. comes to the end. Yeah. Where now we are so much afraid of what is on, the, on that side mm. of the world. Yeah. To the point that now the enemy, or while people are saying just enjoy, just enjoy, the enemy takes advantage of it and then put fear in us. The Bible is telling us that Jesus has changed the whole perspective. And so David at the time, in the Old Testament, is telling us the perspective is the, the other side brings in more mm. 
because that is where the eternity is. All right. The life that we are so much engrossed with, which only gives us about 105 years. Now we are presenting to you eternity. Mm. And so David is saying in Psalm chapter 49 that there is one side where people think that they are going to accumulate wealth. They have everything. Mm -hmm. But then they lose focus. They lose touch on eternity. All right. But he is also very, he is very convinced that God is going to redeem his soul. Mm. So as he lives on earth, his focus is not on material, on materialistic values, but rather on the value the Savior places on him. All right. On the value God places on him. So the, the, the study is telling us today, whatever thing that is attracting our focus, what is that perspective of God that has been introduced? All right. Whatever our focus is at the moment, mm. are we looking on the God side? All right. Because when we do that, then the, the promise of eternity, David is telling us, is going to be on our part. God is willing and can redeem our soul from the grave. Amen. 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 Great. Uh, reading some few verses from Psalm 49, um, from verse 15 going, David says, But God will ransom my soul from the power of Sheol, which is the grave. Yes. Mm -hmm. For he will receive me. Be not afraid when a man becomes rich, mm. when the glory of his house increases. For when he dies, he will carry nothing away. Yes. <laughs> his glory will not go down after him. For though while he lives, he counts himself blessed, and though you get praise when you do well for yourself, his soul will go to the generation of his fathers, yes. who will never again see, see light. light. Yeah. Man in his pomp, yet without understanding, is like the beast that perish. From the English Standard Version, that's how it puts it. Yes. Man in his pomp. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man in his pride. Yet without understanding, it's like the beast that perish. that perish. Wow. Wow. And you are talking about science. Yes. And, um, you know, this very dawn, I was speaking with my wife. And I was telling her that we were talking about uh, medications. Okay. Yeah, my daughter is going through some, yes, uh, medications and all of that. And um, I was amazed about how potent and effective some medications are yeah all right because she was behaving in a certain way she took a certain medicine and we saw the effect so, was okay. yeah so i was telling her um science has really contributed a lot, a lot. yes and i believe that because many people see the usefulness yeah Without it, we can imagine how life would be. Yeah. It, is, it has become very easy to lead people astray. Yeah. That's it. And, and, and no wonder people um, try to put their faith, I mean, their confidence more on it than yeah. even the word of God. Because <laughs> they see the, the results. Yeah, of, of the science. discoveries. The discoveries. But Psalm 49, yeah. verse um, 20, 20, says, Man in his pomp. Yeah. Yet without understanding, it's like, like the beast, beast that, that perish. perish. Right? Yes. Yes. So, um, Enoch, mm -hmm. there, there is no conflict between science and God. Science and the Bible, right? Yeah. God is the greater scientist. Yes. <laughs> and nature is the object of study for science. Yes. Exactly. But we human beings have created that uh, conflict. conflict. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, Enoch, mm -hmm. what would you add to that? And then you go to the Tuesday from the depths of the okay. earth. Okay, so before I go to the yeah. depths of the earth, yes. from, from the power of the grave, I think one thing that we have to understand is that there is nothing wrong with being rich. Yes. There is nothing wrong with having money. Not at all. No. Well, but so someone says, yes. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Yes. <laughs> the, other side is, the other side is the lack of money is also the root of all evil. <laughs> exactly. It so, is also true. You know, there, there's nothing wrong with having mm. money. I think what scriptures has, the challenge that scriptures has with man is when we, we put all our hearts mm. in money. Yes. Because... When you look at the, 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 the parable, the story about the young um, rich king, yes. 
ruler. Yeah, yeah young rich ruler. Mm. I mean, he had done everything. He, 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 he was even looking for um, Christ to meet him. Yes. Now he meets him and he says, I mean, I've done everything. I mean, I've kept the commandments, loved my neighbor as myself. He said, okay, he's left with one thing. Mm. Go and sell your properties you and give it to the poor. You know, and I think last time we were discussing this in church. If his heart was not following the wealth, I mean, the, the Bible says he had, mm. uh, he had, he he had great possessions. Great possessions. Yes. So if his heart does not follow these possessions, he wouldn't have uh, worried within his heart. Mm. I mean, he could have just gone to give it freely. Mm. Having faith that, I mean, once he gives, mm. I mean, the Bible says once we give, he mm. continues. The more we even give, the more mm. we become mm. blessed. But it's and interesting to note how this man was irrational. Yeah. <laughs> Highly irrational. You remember the other parable of um, a man, um, someone who um, cultivated great yes. you know, yields. He yeah. had great yield. Mm -hmm. And he said, let me expand it and mm. even build more mm. barns. Right? Yeah. And then tell myself, my soul rejoice and eat because you have stored a lot. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And God said, thou foolish, foolish man. man. This very this nice, very I will take. This rich young ruler, mm -hmm. if he was aware of the person he was speaking with, mm. that he is the creator, and that what he asked him to do, mm, he can do it in a different way mm -hmm. by just taking his life from him. Yes. What will happen to his possessions? I mean, <laughs> you don't even get to... You, you get my point. Yeah. Yeah. Go and sell, give to the poor and live. Mm -hmm. That one is difficult to you. For you. Yes. Okay, so I take away <laughs> your life. The possessions go to people the same way. People same who way. didn't and work for it. Who they didn't work for it. Yes. And yet <laughs> you are not alive also on top of it. <laughs> and you see, the funny thing is, this is currently playing out. Currently, yes. in our lives. Yes. People will sacrifice everything. Mm. And sometimes at a detriment of their own health. Yes. Mm -hmm. At a detriment of their own family. Yes. And then when they come out of it, and you ask them, and they will still find ways to justify. Exactly. exactly. So it tells you how sometimes in our, in th in our thinking, yeah. in our rationality, mm -hmm. we are still irrational. Irrational. You understand? Exactly. Thinking that we are reasoning mm. or thinking rationally, we are mm -hmm. still irrational. Yeah. All right, Enoch, um, go on with the Tuesday for us. Okay, so the Tuesday's lesson, mm. um, David is now trying to... Uh, I mean, in Psalm 71, he says, God is his rock. Yes. Now, David is trying to look for security and hope from God. Mm. Because here, here we can see that David is surrounded by enemies and false accusers who are trying to say that God has forsaken him. So from the depth of the earth, yes. right? Okay. From the, from the depth of the earth. Mm. And so we can see in Psalm 71, mm -hmm. verse 6, where first David realizes that God had held him up from death. Mm. And so this is one what, thing. What, what does he say? Tell he, us. He, he uh, says in, mm -hmm. in Psalm 71 verse 6. Yes. He says, by you, which is God, yes. I have been upheld from death. Mm. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. Mm. This, this, this statement, mm. David likes it very much. <laughs> out of my mother's womb. Mm. And praise shall be continually of you. Uh, from, from the English Standard Version, he says, Upon you I have leaned mm -hmm. from, upon you I have leaned from before my birth. Mm? Yes. Yes. Uh, and you are he who took me from my mother's womb. Exactly. So, so he's referring to God as the chief midwife. Yes, <laughs> who has taken care of him all this while. <laughs> and so if, if he doesn't, if, he sh if as a, as a, as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, I've gotten up to this point in life where people are, are, are saying that God has forsaken me, I should be able to remember that from my mother's womb, he has been able to hold me up to this point in time. And at this point in time, that is not the end of life. Sure. At any point in time, sure. things can turn around. Mm. And the blessings that comes even after that moment, you begin to be amazed about this kind of God that we are serving. And that's what David was comforting himself with. Mm. When he said that, I mean, God has held him now from his foot. In verse 17, yes. Psalm 71, verse 17, mm -hmm. David says, Oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Mm -hmm. 
and to this day I declare your wondrous works. And so he knows that, I mean, you people can say, I mean, at this point in time, if you people feel that God has forsaken me, he mm. has also been with me. Mm. From infancy, which was in verse 6. Yes. Now he's talking about his youthful his youth. days. Yeah, okay. Where the Lord has been with him. Mm. Despite all that David has done, despite all that we have done, despite all that you have done, mm. the Lord has continued to hold you through all this period. And verse 6 says, when we, when we go back to, no, when we go back to verse 3, mm -hmm. he says that, be my strong refuge, mm. to which I may resort continually. And so, even though probably you feel that God has forsaken him, he will continue to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will continue to uphold him, even at this point in time, where things are difficult in my life. Mm. He's still going to see me through. And that is what explains from the depth of the earth. Mm. And so, the, uh, the other part of verse 3 says that, you have given the commandment to save me. Mm. For you are my rock and my fortress. Sure. Sure. That mm. alone should be what a seven-day Adventist Christian should say at any point in time. Amen. That, that the true. Lord will continue to be our rock and our fortress, despite all the happiness, despite the jobs that we experience in our lives. Mm. We lose everything that we have. Still, the Lord will be our rock and our fortress. All as right. long as we <clears throat> believe that whatever test that he's going to give us will not be beyond us, mm -hmm. whatever that we are going because through. Because he has assured us. Yes. He has assured us so. Yes. He has assured us as that well. And so whatever not. test that we are going through, mm. the Lord knows that we can go through it. And that's why we are facing it. Sure, sure. Um, Dr. Burton, some uh, your, your, your brief thoughts on the Tuesday's lesson. I then then I, we go to the Wednesday. Your I, dead shall live. Yes. So I would say that David remembered. David remembered. Okay. So that's the key word. Yes. He remembered. Yes. What did he remember? He remembered how the Lord has brought him all the way. So you can see the reference. Yes. From the womb mm -hmm. to the time he came out, mm -hmm. he understood that it is not for nothing. From the, he, he remembered the trajectory <laughs> the, of yes, life. Yes, that's it. How they are following. Yes, the path. But sometimes we think things happen ad hoc. Mm -hmm. They are without plan. Mm. And we have this probabilistic mentality that if it is happening this way, uh, is it going to, and then what is, and then we try to Think too up. much, yes. think too much, speculate, <laughs> yes. and then our fears and anxiety heighten. Heightened. Yes. But it, when we remember, everything can calm down. Yes. I like that. I like that. You know, um, one of life's greatest challenges or things that, um, one thing in life that hinders us is fear. Yeah. And that's why this, this quarter's theme is death, dying, and the future hope. Mm. You know, death is the, um, the best representation of fear. Yeah. That's why the Bible refers to it as the last enemy. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, f we are all, everyone is afraid to die. Mm. So fear is very, very real. A and that is why we need hope. You know, David is telling us that. Believers, let us remember yeah. how God has brought us from, where he has brought us to. Let's remember from when you were so fragile as an infant, as a child, you could have, anything could have happened to you easily. You have lived till now. I mean, I remember some specific instances in my life. Well, I, I had a bicycle accident. You know, we were all riding it. You, know, you, you climb a hill, and then we come back, and then another person would take the turn. It got to my turn. I have <laughs> climbed the hill, and I am descending. <laughs> I'm descending. I didn't know what happened. Mm -hmm. I lost control of the brakes, and then free. I came, I hit, the bicycle hit a wall, I jumped over the wall, and my, my head hit the ground. It was terrible. I remember some of all, some of these things, and look, 
at a point I, I thought that I had internal bleeding. You understand? But God has sustained us through all of this. If you, if you ask any parent, um, especially um, with the male bonds, yeah. it's not easy. What we have, <laughs> what all. all of us have gone through. <laughs> you understand? All. But God has delivered us from the depth of the earth. Yes. That's it. And that gives us hope that your life is precious to him. Mm. And he will ensure that um, he deals justly with you and sustains your life. All right. So let's go to Wednesday. Your dead shall live. Mm. Your dead shall live. Um, what is happening here? Enoch, we come back to you. Uh, Dr. Boaton. Yes. yes, Dr. Boaton, yes. Yeah. yes. So, so, so the lesson is telling us that mm. your dead shall live. And I will say hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, man. You see, when we talk about dead, it seems to be something that is so uncharacteristic of humans. Yes, yes. Something we've never been able to come to terms with. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the utmost thing to fear. Mm -hmm. The Bible is telling us that we shall live, but it comes on a condition. The condition that you build yourself mm. as a person that represents Christ or represent God. Our life should be built around that kind of hope that we have in him. You see, the Bible makes us understand in the book of Isaiah, where Isaiah was praising, I mean, giving this poetic expression. And given these two instances, when we check from, in fact, from the verse 3 coming, mm -hmm. that would keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Yes. You see, all these things, God is saying through the, what Isaiah is telling us that, if you are focused on me, if your hope is on me, your dead shall live. Amen. 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 But then if the focus <coughs> is not on God, mm. then there is going to be other way. Mm. In verse 14, the, 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 the Bible tells us that they, they are dead, they shall not live. Mm -hmm. They are dead, they shall not live. Mm. They are sheets. Yes. They will not arise. They mm -hmm. will never arise. To that end, you have visited them with destruction and wiped out all remembrance of them. All remembrance of them. So you see... That's the other side, right? Yes. Oh, okay. That is the other side. Mm. But if our life and is... this is not pleasant. No, at all. <laughs> not at all. You see, when, when your life... When, when, when two scenarios of life and death are presented before you, sometimes we don't even think about the death side. We only think about we live in. It is innate in us to live and live and live without thinking about li living out yes. of this world. Yes. But it is going to be part of us mm. at some point. All right. And we have others who have lost their loved ones. The Bible is telling us, you're dead. That person, your father, that man you trusted so much, that man who committed himself to the cause of God, mm. shall mm. live. All right. Because he lived his life in a way that magnified the Lord. Mm -hmm. You were given an instance of a man who, on a day, on a Sabbath, going on ministry, yeah. lost his, his, his soul, uh, his life. Mm -hmm. The Bible is telling us that he had focused on God. He used God as his refuge. You see, sometimes we say, uh, I shall live and I will never die. No. Death will come at some point. Yes. But what they live... The, the, what the Bible is telling us is that our focus should not be on this mundane mm -hmm. planet. No. Mm. Our focus should be on that celestial environment that God has created for us, where we are going to live forever and ever. Amen. 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 All right. For the sake of time, um, Enoch, you will add the Thursday, those who sleep in the dust, and then we will um, give our final comments. Okay, so mm -hmm. the Thursday's lesson is trying to tell us that even though we are sleeping in the dust, the day that Michael and his angels will come, will rise again. Amen. Now that day, it tells us that every eye will see him. Mm -hmm. Even those who pierced him, even those who nailed him on the cross are going to see him. Amen. Now, when we take the story of Martha and Lazarus. 
in John chapter 11, verse 24. Mm. Now let's read verse 23 to 24. Okay. And 25. It says that Jesus said to her, your brother will rise okay. mm. again. Now Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again mm -hmm. in the resurrection mm -hmm. at the last day. Mm. So at this point, Martha feels that, oh, I mean, now Lazarus is dead. Mm. You didn't come from the funeral. You are now here. <coughs> I mean, I believe strongly that, yes, in, in the end, eventually, he's going to rise, okay? But now, Jesus Christ comes to perform another miracle. Mm -hmm. Even though, yes, Lazarus was going to die again, mm -hmm. but the statement from Martha says that, I know that mm -hmm. he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Mm. And Jesus wanted to demonstrate it. Yes, that I am and the, the resurrection, resurrection mm -hmm. and the life. Mm. <laughs> so today, I'm going to resurrect Lazarus. Yes. And eventually, when Jesus Christ was showed where the tomb of Lazarus was, mm. he called us Lazarus, and Lazarus came. That is the power of Jesus Christ. Mm. And so, when we ask that those who have been cremated, mm. those who have been eaten up by mammals, I mean lions, I mean during the Daniel's time, yes. the Christians who stood for mm. God, they have all been eating. Flood has yes. taken some away. And people are asking, how are these people going to come back again? Because mm. their flesh is gone. I mean, you can't even find where they are. No traces. Yes. Mm. But one thing we have to also know that in the beginning, there mm. was nothing. Yes. And God created man out of something. Mm. And so this something that he has created, and you are asking that he can't bring it back. He's the resurrection and the life. Yes. In verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And verse 26 says that, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Now Jesus Christ asked her, do you believe this? Yes. We strongly believe that yes, in the end. So those who sleep in the dust will rise again. All right. When Michael comes. Sure. Amen. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the Bible from the Wednesday and the Thursday, what we are reading, um, the Bible also talks about life after death, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. But it's, it, 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 it states that life after death will happen at a point in time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, pagan people also believe in life after death. That death is not the end. Mm. The Bible also believes that, or talks about, death is not the end of this life, is it? Exactly. It's not. The difference is how the two take place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the world's, um, or the paganistic idea of life after death is immediately the person dies, the mm. life continues. Yes. yes. Because the immortal soul mm. lives. Yeah. Continuous. Continues to live mm. somewhere. But this is different from uh, the Bible's mm. teaching. All right, um, science man, Dr. <laughs> Burton, okay. give us the summary of the Friday. So the Friday's lesson talks about the involvement of science mm. in all of these. Um, science can talk about what matter is composed of. Mm. Science can demonstrate in the in the interim, what is the composition of something? Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, science have not been able to replicate the very breath that holds me together mm. and holds you together. Mm. It's something that is still very <laughs> difficult to come up with. We are trying our hands on robotics and whatever. Artificial intelligence, they mm. are all trying to. But then the lesson is telling us that these technologies, mm -hmm. these things that science is trying to let us believe in, fall flat for, are not the replacement for what God has prepared, has for, prepared us. for us. Amen. 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 So science and by extension all human beings, yes. we are limited yes. with our, the, our power, the power and abilities and what we can do. And therefore, the need to trust in God. Mm -hmm. You know, final comments. Final comments. I yes. think it's, it's been an interesting lesson. 
trying to understand the Old Testament hope. Mm. We've spoken about Daniel, we've spoken about Abraham, and we have seen um, the faith that David also had, even despite the struggles that he had. Yeah. We've seen, we've learned about Lot, what he went through. Mm. I mean, Lot went through a lot. That is why it is his mm. name. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, um, despite that, mm. he was able to stand it. So oh. I believe that as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, once we have faith in God, mm. we'll be able to go through. Okay. All right. Beloved, our cherished audience, the Bible is telling us or trying to allay, reduce our fears. And by telling us our greatest fear, which is death, God has made a provision for it. And if that is the case, then all other fears are also um, under the control of God. Therefore, our hope and trust should be in him. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Boati will give us the final prayer, closing prayer. Let's pray. Our omnipotent Father, thank you so much for reminding us of these precious messages. Sometimes fear drives out all this knowledge and it gets so tough for us. We believe that what we are learning from the Old Testament patriarchs, you would help us to drive a deeper understanding, not only within ourselves, but within our circles. Help us that we will develop new focus that will be so much centered on you than the world. Bless us this day in the name of Saint Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.